Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the newly released Savoia Marchetti S55. This is a new Local Legends from that series from Osobo and it was originally supposed to be released at the same time as the Italy World Update but got delayed and so it is associated with Italy as you might expect uh, but yeah we are going to see how it flies and what it looks like. Thing. I just like weird planes, frankly speaking, uh, and this is weird enough. There is also another flying boat available, uh, also from the Local Legends series, that is the Dornier flying boat, I think it's the DOX, and that was associated with Spain, uh, but yeah, we're gonna take a look at this one. I, I like both designs, really, uh, but this is unquestionably weirder, so I was going with this one. Uh, maybe I'll get the Dornier some other time but I have not gotten it so far. Uh, there are two variants, as you can see. There's the original version and then the X version, which has souped up engines. The original had 500 horsepower engines and the souped up version had 800 horsepower engines. And you can see three bladed props there. Uh, two engines, right? Uh, there's a pusher and a puller. And they don't go really fast. And the climb rate is really slow. And they do have a lot of range, but they take a long time to do it. So there you have it. But we'll go with the original version because it's uh, red and interesting and will probably be more of a struggle, I guess. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. But actually the main struggle here is actually flying a place to fly out of. It is a flying boat, so we need to start in the water, right? And they, there are water runways available, but they're all here. <laughs> They're all in the United States, the Canada and all. Uh, oh, open filters. And we can go over to the airports here. And let's get rid of everything but the water runways. And, um, well, we have water runways on and what you see is nothing. <laughs> uh, here, uh, th there are some, uh, you can barely see them though. Uh, only if you zoom in really close do they pop up. There's a channel there. So maybe we need to zoom in on Europe a little bit more and maybe we'll find some. We're looking for a little white dot somewhere. And I'm looking up here because I actually know there is one somewhere up there. Uh, but I can't see it. But the point is, this was supposed to be for the Italy local legends. It is a flying boat. And we have no way of actually taking off in it from a water runway. Now, there are other ways of managing this, but actually there is a runway that we can use. It's just not great. And it's not in Italy, but it's close. Let me just turn everything back on. Okay, so one other possibility is there is a airport that's associated with a challenge called the Scalaria Air Challenge Water Landing Area. And that's what I was trying to find there. So that might be a possibility. I don't know if that's added by a third party pack or not, maybe. Uh, another possibility that you might have already thought of is, and I would like to fly it around Sicily actually, is just clicking on the map and setting departure. Uh, the problem is it won't get you on the surface. It'll give you some altitude as 1,500 feet, which is nice. And if you set a uh, arrival and you go to nav log, you can try to set your cruise altitude to zero. But we'll try. We'll try this. We'll go out. We've set it to zero, right? So maybe it'll be in the water, but it'll probably be in the air still. So we'll try this first but we aren't taking off. We'll try that Losa place in order to do a proper takeoff and see if that works out. But it's not a very long runway in the water. It was like 1,000 feet. We'll see how much clearance it gives us. So yeah, it starts us out in the air 1,500 feet. I don't know how to start it in the water from a custom departure. But anyway, since we're here, let's take a look at the plane. The instruments are custom. As you might expect, there's uh, the air pressure that's uh, in atmospheres there. Uh, the one on the farthest left there, I think might be the temperature. I'm not sure what that is, actually. Then there's the pressure. Uh, then it's our speed. I think that's kilometers per hour. 
and the variometer, which is the vertical speed indicator, and then the altimeter in uh, thousands of meters. So we're about one kilometer up. And oh, maybe it, uh, it should be in meters, but I thought we were starting 1,500 feet, so I'm not sure. Um, uh, these next two I don't know about, uh, nor that one or that one, but here, uh, the ones that say Giri times 100, that's response to my throttle, so I know what that is. I think uh, the ones that say B also somewhat respond to my throttle. And then we have the compass. The compass is weird. I don't know if you can see it properly here. It is at an angle. I should have used track IR. Uh, but you can see there are little arrows that say 0, 1, 2, 3. And you'll notice that the 3 and the 0 are closer together. And that's because between 300 and 0 on the compass, there's only 60 degrees. Between the other spikes on that, there are 100 degrees and so there are 100 degree markers but the way this works is if the zero is pointing forward it's it's a little bit weird if the zero is pointing at 50 on the top sort of arc there so just about like this that means that our heading is currently 50 degrees that's a strange thing, but let's ver verify by the VFR map here that it looks like we're going 50 degrees. And indeed, that's uh, the angle that we seem to be going at. So, yeah, and then if we turn right here, the zero is pointing at 60, 70, 80, and then when the zero is pointing at 90, we're at 90 degrees. And then you can sort of see that the one is coming online, right? Now we're at 100 degrees. Now we follow the one because the zero is off scale. And so now we're at 110 degrees. <laughs> it's a very interesting compass. I sort of like this compass in a way. See, now it's 120 degrees. Anyway, so that's how that works. It's whichever needle is pointing at the thing, you take that number and add it to what's on the arc. And that's your heading. So that's fancy. Let's take a look outside. I mean, this is nicely weathered. It's got a nice shine to it. Overall, I think it looks pretty. And looking back inside, of course, it's also uh, quite nice. It's, it really is like a flying boat. It's like we've got a speedboat or something. It's not difficult to handle at all. And actually, it climbs better than it probably ought to. On Wikipedia, it says that this thing took 9 minutes to climb to 1,000 meters or 3,300 feet. I don't think this will take that, that long, actually. It's pretty, it's a lot, it's got a lot more lift than that would suggest, considering the variometer there. And I'm not at full throttle, let me put it to full throttle there. The maximum speed for this variant uh, is 205 kilometers per hour, so we're not really pushing it. The stall speed is 105 kilometers per hour, or 57 knots. Certainly I would feel like it ought to be buffeted a lot more by winds and such. Right now it's very stable. And such a large plane flying so slow would probably be subjected to a lot of gusts and all. But I'm mostly interested in taking off and landing in it, so let's try landing in it. I have not tried landing it, so that should be interesting. We'll just find some likely patch of water to do that. Really, the metal on the the windshield here is very nice. I like how they did that. Overall, the interior is sort of nice. We can see the rear propeller there. I mean, all of these double dials have something to do with the engine. I just don't know what exactly. 
so we can sort of look up and see our engines like that. Well, I'll tell you one thing, with this huge wing, this is not descending quickly. One thing the $15 Asobo planes don't have is a whole lot of failure modeling, which is a little bit sad, especially with these older planes. I wish they had more failure modeling because, well, older planes had failures and that makes things interesting. They are quirky in lots of ways. One thing about this model is they still put the uh, sort of more modern digital radio thing there. The comm deck. Not too sure why they felt compelled to do that. <laughs> I mean, we could just tune things with the ATC menu here if necessary, after all. Near this airport list. Uh, you know, so I mean, given that, I don't know why they would persist in having the comm deck there. There's a little windshield on the on the right pod there and little doors, trap doors, so that I guess people could pop out of that. The left pod has the trap doors too, but no windshield. So you can have sort of an optional lookout place. And of course they have windows, I guess people could sit in that. Perhaps for longer range flights they would store more fuel in there. Because this did cross the Atlantic and stuff like that. So it was involved in very long range flights. Speaking of which, I don't know if there's a fuel indicator. Well, let's see. I'm gonna change our fuel amount to make it lighter for landing, let's say. Okay. I don't think anything else changed. Yep, I don't think we have a fuel indicator as far as I can tell. They have little cubby holes for your snacks for the long flights. That harbor there looks like a nice place. Let's see if we can land close to that. Okay, well, there's our harbor, but of course we're not landing inside of it yet. We'll see if we can taxi into it maybe. Trim works fine. Well, we're getting close to zero. Oh, there's the waves. I heard some sound like we splashed down already. Up oh, there! I think we hopped a bit. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we're hopping. We're spruce goosing or something. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Slowing down? We're slamming into water a lot. I mean, not a whole lot of vertical speed. Ooh, we're nosing down. <laughs> okay, I think I think we're definitely down now. Okay, control. We have control. Quite a lot of control, actually. Gosh, we land ways away from the harbor, though. Reflection on the water is a little bit weird. I'm not too sure what to make of that. Interesting. Well, I won't go into the harbor. Let's just see if we can take off from here. I'm sure we can. And not much of a takeoff run, either. Yep, no problems at all. The problem is, we don't have enough places to take off from naturally instead of starting off in the air. Yeah, this seems like a good place for a uh, seaplane to take off from. I think the trees are added by the Bijan Habashi tree pack though, so it's probably not so tree-y. Alright, let's try that one airport though. The one location in Europe that 
I might be able to take off from off of the water. So, Scalaria Air Challenge Water Landing Area. Well, we're going to try and take off. Uh, yeah, let's go 29. And if we take a look at it, 29 is good because even if we don't take off in that distance, we've got the rest of the channel. But it seems like this can take off of uh, from a fairly small amount of water. It's got the big wing and everything. Okay, well, it looks really good around here, I'll give it that. Uh, but it's not in Italy, so <laughs> having a place to take off from in Italy would be nice. Anyway, here we go. So that's LOSA. And we should be able to take off now. Yep, no problems. Very nice location. If I had a complaint, it might be that it's just too easy to fly. <laughs> it is very easy to fly. So anyway, I won't belabor a uh, full flight with this just yet. Uh, that this has been a flight test of the plane and a quick look at it. And it looks good, that's for sure, and it flies well. And uh, the climb rate is probably a little bit high. It is my kind of weird plane. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.